Welcome to Vintage Variety. Today's content is going to be all about repurposing jewelry and designing your own pieces of jewelry. Many of us as collectors do like to make our own jewelry occasionally. Often I will have an idea pop in my head for designing a piece of jewelry that I would like to wear myself or I'll see something that I would certainly like to own but can't afford and decide to try to make something as close to it as I possibly can. So many of you will know what I'm talking about when I say that many people that collect jewelry also like to make their own jewelry. I'm also gonna talk a little bit about repurposing jewelry. I don't know about you, but I have quite a few times ran across pieces of jewelry that someone had made or crafted using vintage pieces of jewelry. When it comes to vintage jewelry, there's only so much of it out there and some of it is actually very valuable. So I would never take a piece of vintage jewelry that was repairable or that had nothing wrong with it and use it to make something else. The only time that I would scrap something, set it to the side to use it for parts to repair other pieces or use it to make something on my own is if it was just damaged to the point that there would really be no way to repair it or there would be no way to find the pieces that were needed to repair it. I'm going to show you a piece of jewelry that I did repurpose into something else and I feel like it turned out quite beautiful. This is a piece of jewelry that I repurposed. The center part is the part of jewelry that's been repurposed and this has also been repurposed. I'm gonna take this off the form and I'm going to show you the back of it. This is the back of this piece and I'm not entirely sure if at one time or the other it was a fur clip or a brooch. It does have this piece here and this almost looks like a piece that a fob would have hung on. So it may have very well have been a brooch at one time. You can see where here and here something was broke off. So at this point, I'm going to guess that this was actually a brooch. You can tell that the stone inside of it was once foiled on the back. I decided that I would preserve this piece by turning it into a pendant for a necklace. What I've done to make this into a pendant is I attached a jump ring on each side. When I showed the back, you most likely noticed that the back looks kind of like filigree. So I was able to attach these jump rings without damaging the piece or altering it in any way. Then I attached chain to the jump rings. I wanted to have a piece that dangled at the bottom and what I came up with was I had this single earring that I got in a jewelry bag. And because I didn't have a mate to it, I decided to repurpose it into this necklace by attaching it to the jump ring and then attaching it to the necklace. This is a piece of jewelry that I designed for myself. And all of the pearls that you see on this piece of jewelry came from a very old necklace that was broken. The clasp was missing and some of the pearls were in really bad condition. So what I did was I salvaged the pearls that were in good condition and I just put them to the side. And then later on, I ran across another necklace with these little beads on it, the gold colored beads and it was broken. In fact, it was just a piece of a necklace. These were all of the beads that were left over from that necklace. So I saved those also, and I got to thinking about it one day, and I dug through my craft supplies for making jewelry and found these purple beads, and I combined this. Now, this necklace isn't finished. I plan to add a pendant I just haven't ran across the right piece of jewelry that was broken or the right pendant that I could add to this. Just wanted to show this as another example of 
pieces that have been repurposed. This next necklace is a necklace that I made and some of the components in this necklace were repurposed and some of them were new. I've shown this necklace in content before. I wanted to make something in the Haskell style. She did a lot of wire work on her pieces. A lot of her necklaces, brooches, and even earrings would consist of a piece of filigree that had lots of pieces wired onto them, such as rose montes, bow pearls, lots of things like that. And they would, each piece would be wired on. And that's what I did with this piece. It took me quite some time to do this piece and get it the way I wanted it to look. But I was very happy with the result. The blue beads that you see on this piece, all of these are vintage beads. They came from a necklace that, again, was broken to the point that it wasn't repaired. In fact, I didn't have enough beads to do this necklace. So I purchased these smaller beads and these gold beads along with bead caps and things like that. So I would have enough to make the necklace. And I'm gonna show you the back of this and how it's constructed. First, I'm gonna give you a really close view of the pendant that's on this. And if you look at these beads closely, you can tell that they are very old beads. This is the back of the piece and what I've done here is I've used a piece of filigree to wire the pieces on, and then I've wired another piece of filigree over this to cover all of the wiring. It's not a perfect job, but this was the first time I had ever attempted to do something like this. So I feel like it turned out rather well. For the end of this necklace, I added a toggle clasp Another type of jewelry making that I like to do is wire wrapping. It's something that I feel like I'm fairly good at. I'm not as good as a lot of people that I have seen. There are some people that have made some magnificent pieces of jewelry using wire and wire wrapping. And I had showed this wire in recent content. This one is craft wire. You can buy wire like this that is gold plated. You can buy silver wire like this or silver plated. You can buy in gold tone, copper tone. It comes in different gauges. You can also buy a flat wire like this. And there's a lot of different techniques that you can use for making pieces of jewelry and using jewelry wire or craft wire in the case of this one. These are just some of the tools and I showed these in the last content I did. Flat nose pliers, round nose pliers, and this is a pair of wire cutters. I'm gonna show you some of the pieces that I have made wire wrapping. The first piece is this bracelet and this is one of the earliest pieces that I wrapped, so it's not perfect. This bracelet is adjustable. You can see where I got really sloppy on the ends of it. But I felt like for just learning how to do it, that it was a pretty good effort. Use the wire to wrap all of the beads that are on this bracelet. And the bracelet itself, this part is just a thicker gauge of wire. Many of you are probably already familiar with this type of jewelry. It is really fun jewelry to make once you get the hang of how to do it. I feel like this is one of the best pieces that I've ever made. I did this using copper wire and faux turquoise, and this is a pendant. This is the bell on it. Once you get the hang of how to do this, it's relatively simple. These little swirls were made using the round nose pliers that I showed you earlier. And the wire is wrapped in such a way that it holds the stone into place. There's the back of it. 
This is another piece that I've done in wire. And you can see that I've used the wire. I've wrapped it at the bottom and I've just used it to cage in this stone. Again, this piece is using a glass cabochon that I bought at a jewelry supply store. And then I've encaged it in the wire and I've added some little pearls to it. This is another one. This cabochon, again, came from a jewelry supply store. And this was when I was first learning. You can see that I got a little bit messy on the bell, but practice does make perfect. This one is also a pendant, and you can see it's a little bit better than the earlier ones that I showed. Now I'm gonna show you a couple of pairs of earrings that I designed for myself. These are made from beads that I purchased. These are not repurposed beads, but I thought they were really cute. They look like little upside down flowers. There's these, and I made these using pink satin glass beads. I hope you enjoyed this content today, and I hope that it was helpful in giving you some ideas of pieces of jewelry that you could make for yourself. If you liked this content, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe and ring the bell for more content on collecting vintage and antique items. Thank you again for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.